excited. I just uh, got off the Zoom with our uh, our travel roster. I've been uh, been able to meet with these guys uh, via Zoom uh, all throughout the course of the week, but uh, not the same as uh, as in person. And uh, one of my favorite things to do is talk about you know who they are, what they are, and how we want to play the game. And uh, just got done doing that. I was excited to uh, uh, get in front of them. You know, felt the energy, uh, like where they're at. Um, been able to watch them all week on the on the practice field and uh, feel comfortable where they're at and and uh, from a health standpoint we're uh, should be you know fairly uh, fairly good about everybody that's in there really from a, an injury standpoint you know just don't know this world that we're in right now what we're battling with currently with me um, but for the most part we should be good to go and excited for the opportunity on Saturday uh, got a little different this year we're actually busting over um, years past I know they've They've flown, but just where everything was at, they decided to bus us over. So we start tomorrow on a bus trip, about four and a half hours uh, to get to, to actually stay in uh, in Cedar Rapids, I believe. So we've got a little bit different thing. That's our first road trip of the year, but uh, we've got a plan for that and how our guys need to adjust and handle that. Should be good to go. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Coach, this is uncharted territory for you. Have you reached out to anybody that's kind of been through something similar? To get some advice how to how to manage Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not just uh, not just recently. I've done this uh, for really since I got here. Um, I lived it, you know, through the COVID world and the in the pros. So we had a plan that I worked closely with Joe uh, when I was with the Giants last year in case something happened. Uh, talked through several people that he had conversed with in the NFL, and then when I came to college, just knowing that uh, in the spring it may happen, I uh, talked about it, and then also talked to a couple. Big Ten coaches uh, that uh, uh, and other college coaches that have gone through it last year and this year. I believe there was six uh, Big Ten coaches last year that um, were actively going to be uh, unable to participate in the game. Now, a couple of those got canceled, uh, so they didn't actually go through game day. But, uh, you know, the NCAA is pretty clear on what my rules are uh, on game day itself. But really, to how to handle all the way up until that moment it was most of those conversations. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Yeah, Coach, it seems like a two pretty similar teams in, in terms of style of play, maybe a bit different in scheme on, on defense. But uh, what, what do you think are some of the keys for you guys to come out of there with a win on Saturday? Well, you know, um, obviously a lot of respect for, for Iowa and how they play. I get the, the comparisons, but we're, we're two different type teams in, in um, you know, offense and defensive schemes. Um, uh, special teams, we're, we're opportunistic just like they are. Uh, have some punters that have a lot of similarities. Uh, but I, I think the keys for us is to play our game, right? Well, we practice Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday of this week. Uh, even going back to last week with our bye week, we watched them play Minnesota. There were some things that definitely came up in that game that are nuances, obviously, first complete game with the new quarterback. Um, but for the most part, you know, uh, uh, I was very efficient when they win the turnover margin. Um, when they're at home, they're they're pretty hard to – uh, defeat when they when they uh, win a turnover margin they they play extremely well with ball control so we gotta we gotta understand that going into the game but we have to do what we do right defensively we got to keep the ball in front of us tackle well apply pressure to the quarterback uh, disruption through either you know the tackles or the ball ball in the air or on, on the ground game and uh, you know really capitalize on the moments and be great in critical situations. This feels like a game where special teams is going to come into play and be a factor. Would you, would you agree with that? And yeah, you know, it always is. It hasn't really played out that way in our games this year, just because our kickers and punters uh, have been very good about not allowing much return game. Uh, but this guy uh, has more returns than anybody we faced this year in the punting game. Um, uh, I, I really uh, got a lot of respect for what they do. Uh, but I think anytime we're in a game that that you know a close Big Ten West game uh, for us on the road, ball ball. Uh, um, uh, placement where the ball is uh, to start a series, right? Starting starting yard line is going to be a huge factor. So that ball position uh, is going to be a big, big factor in every game. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Hey, Brad, after listening to the radio show last night, can I just get some clarity on what Pat Ryan's role will be tomorrow and and just kind of how you, you came to that? It sounded like, if I'm not mistaken, he'll be effectively taking over a lot of your duties in, in the terms of challenges and timeouts. Can I just get some clarity on that? Um, yeah, well, um, yes and no. So um, Coach Ryan has been with us, uh, obviously, since last spring, um, but has not really been involved with us, uh, you know, from a, a football perspective. So he'll be on the sideline. He'll be able to give um, information to my coaching staff, and, and but he won't be out of headset. So he really won't be involved with the communication officials. What I like is just his presence, his awareness, 
he's going to be on game days in the past. He's really been involved in recruiting and what goes on, but I've asked him to be on the sideline. He'll give feedback to not uh, really my offensive defense and special teams coordinators will be in control while, while they're on the field, like um, in charge of, Hey, we need a timeout. We don't have the right personnel or there's too little time on the, sh- on the shot clock. Um, defensively, we don't like to call or it's an end of half in the game scenario or special teams. Uh, but the guy that will be making those calls um, and, and doing and relating to the officials is uh, uh, a guy that has been working with me all year. He's been kind of my uh, uh, assistant that helps me with all varieties. He hasn't been on the field coaching, but John Marinelli is a guy that um, – and he will wear my headset and, and be able to communicate with, with the people involved. And how did you come to John on this? I know he's got a longtime high school coach, but how did you yeah. kind of fall into this? Um, just as this thing kind of unfolded, uh, you know, I didn't say it earlier in the week just because I don't want a bunch of buzz or hot. Uh, he's literally going to be nothing but the functionality of what we need to have get done. He's on the sidelines with me throughout the whole course of the year. We work closely on, on uh, you know, on game day. He might uh, give me advice or, or thoughts on, hey, the, uh, you know, the uh, we got two timeouts left. They got three. They, he just – I ask him to relay me certain information during the course of the week. I give him projects like on uh, uh, certain games we played uh, on turnovers by a certain player, missed tackles by a certain player, um, end of game scenarios. He makes all of those edits for me. And then he's in every coordinator meeting that I have. So he has nothing to do with on the field coaching. It all has to do with meeting room. And he's been with me every step of the way through these 10 games. So he's got a better understanding of everything that I do on game day than really anybody else in our program. Uh, so he has that experience coming into the game. And then um, game day itself will be handled by the coordinators respectively. And he'll just be the relay piece. I, I talked to the uh, Big Ten office, Bill Carollo. I was trying to see if they would allow me to have multiple coaches be able to, like an offensive coach, Coach McDonald, would be make, make great sense offensively. But when we're on defense, I don't want to take away from his, his ability to, to work with the offense and the receivers. I didn't want him trying to be on the defense side of the ball. So this allows everybody in our program, coaches and players, to stay on task with what we asked them to do. And now a combo platter between Marinelli and Pat Ryan will be able to kind of function as a go-between for me. And if I could get one more, sorry. What's your level? Do you have a level of concern that you guys might be impacted beyond just you on Saturday? Um, well, yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a head coach that was – you know, in the building. Uh, um, but last week, you know, really from Thursday on, I'm trying to think, yeah, I left Thursday for recruiting. I, I literally had no contact with our players um, any way, shape, or form until Sunday. And Sunday we were masked up and, and had a, a very uh, short practice. So I really wasn't around a lot of players. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's really for the last four weeks, to be quite honest, when we had the first uh, element. And again, it wasn't a player, it wasn't, it was a support staff and it was a, a student equipment. Uh, manager um, but but really it's just been on a heavy spike you know the last month in our our campus and our kids are out walking the streets I wasn't anywhere around them but like you know like uh, the, the 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 fact that it's in our community um, you know has been a big factor to be quite honest my my greatest concern was my my wife and my kids right so uh, thankfully they've been negative uh, through this whole thing I've been isolated uh, since uh, since uh, early Monday morning to, to where we are today and Unfortunately, got to stay that way until uh, until they tell me I can come back. Thanks, Brett. Hope you're feeling okay. Yep. Thank you. Hey, Coach. As a former COVID patient, I understand the pains of being isolated. It's quite terrible. But uh, I had a question about the leadership that some of the captains kind of spoke to yesterday. Owen and Vidarian both said they kind of have taken on a greater role of that this week. What's that kind of mean to you to see those two guys do that in your absence? Hey, I loved uh, I loved Owen Carney and Bedarian Lowe long before yesterday. But when I read those comments last night, I, uh, when it's COVID appropriate, I'll give them a big hug because I, I just I, I I have grown so much getting to know them, and 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 if I've had any impact on them on where we are today, to hear your players regurgitate what you what you say and what you believe in, um, you know, there's a lot of things that I saw this week in media from our players, and uh, even just to feel their energy in the meeting I just had with them, I. I know what they're what they're capable of doing. I know what they're uh, trained to do. And you know, I've I've really said this all along, right? It's not what happens; it's how you react to what happens. Um, and when it's at its worst, we're at our best. And 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 those aren't cliches; those are those are ways of thinking. And that's what you got to lean on right now. Um, uh, I'm excited. We didn't 
we didn't just train for the Iowa week this week, right? We've been training on this in January, and, and I think that's the effect of what we see. And then to follow up, you kind of said that there with you didn't train just for Iowa. You've been training for this entire thing. How much of, I guess, this week will be an indicator of everything that you've kind of built since getting here in December? Yeah, you know, every game, it's its independent soul, um, but it's a Big Ten rest, West road game, um, you know, against a team that we greatly respect. Um, uh, every game takes on a life of its own, but I'm, I'm excited to see where they're at. Uh, we're going to have to battle through adversity. We're going to have to ride the highs. Um, it's a very good football team. I think they're ranked number two in the country at one point uh, this year, so so know what they're capable of doing and how they're capable of playing, but um, I am excited to see where they're at and, and – uh, is it one game's not going to determine the season, but uh, I do, I do, I can't tell you how excited uh, these walls are. I feel bad for uh, any any uh, uh, um, uh, piece in this house, right? Because uh, I, I know what I'm going to be doing on Saturday, and unfortunately, I'll be self contained. Thanks, coach. Appreciate it. Good luck with Definitely the rest right. of your isolation. Thanks, man. Hey, coach. Uh, just out of curiosity, how will you take in the game? Uh, I obviously uh, listening on the radio, I assume. Uh, but no, I mean, are you just you watching it like anybody else on TV? Do you get a special link or something? No, no special links. I'm not that I'm not that special yet. Um, but uh, I, I would, I would um, I'll give you a, a sneak preview. Right. So so right now um, I'm planning on watching it on that TV or that TV uh, or that TV or that TV or that TV. I don't know which one I'm going to. Uh, but I have uh, the ability to watch it. I, I said, I want where I'm going to watch it. And I want a backup plan. I want a backup plan to that backup plan. Uh, so like, um, I, I just want to make sure I'm going to be able to take it all in. Um, I'll be able to, uh, you know, tune into FS1. And um, I don't know if I'll turn down the TV volume and turn up the radio volume and listen to uh, Brian and, and, and those guys call it or, or what. I'll probably do a variety of different things. Um, uh, uh, my wife uh, and and I both uh, enjoy the game and love the game. I've never been able to watch my team play with my wife, but she's not in, <laughs> in the same building as me. So I, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to kind of talk through that. I'm just uh, excited to get there. And then I understand uh, uh, the results will go to you on your record. You good with that? I am. Yeah. I, like uh, yeah, I, I told you, I, somebody asked me that question today. It hadn't even really dawned on me, but, um, you know, I love this team win, lose, or, or, or whatever the result is, you got to own it. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're a team that um, I think this thing that has proven to us more than anything is, uh, you know, we're a team that has gone through some things that have been hard to go through, but we've hopefully championed those moments. And regardless of what opened Saturday, we're, we're, we're the University of Illinois football team through and through. No, it makes sense. I was just, you know, for fun. Maybe, maybe George yeah. would wonder if it's, if it's the W, but <laughs> thank you. Yep. Well, I'm curious of what the day to day is right now. Um, you know, are, are you, you know, I see your five screens there. I'm sure you're trying to do the same thing you'd be doing as your office. But is there any, you know, like I'm bored. I'm going to watch some Netflix. I mean, is there anything like that, or are you just full same mode, just isolated? You know, so I'm probably shouldn't admit this, right? But I'm a 51 year old man on this earth that I can't even comprehend what you just said. Like, I've never watched Netflix in my entire life. Like, I have – my wife and I, like, people laugh at us. I think it's because she's extremely cost-effective. She doesn't allow Netflix uh, to be anywhere on my my menu. I also really – I don't watch much except for sports and, and what we do, so there's not a lot of variety. But one of the options I have here in my new setup is Sling. I didn't even know what that meant, right, to get to get TV. So, um no, I, I, my day is really, I, you know, we, we start in the building usually, you know, somewhere where well, our players are all in the building before 6.30. So as coaches were in there between 5, 5.30, that hasn't changed. My, my head clock still goes off. Um, you know, last night I was making an edit at 10.30 last night um, about what I was going through today. Um, uh, once we get through kind of today, even if it was a home game and I was in my office uh, on Friday afternoons to Saturdays, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll focus on next week's opponent, just getting myself uh, refreshed with what their depth chart, their, the games we want to use in our breakdown. Um, I begin to look at early downs on, on Northwestern. So that's just kind of my standard mode of operation. I don't ask my coaches to do that because I, as an assistant, I didn't ever want to do that, but I think as a head coach, you have to, um, and, you know, my wife, uh, um, 
give me a little care package of of goodies uh, that are, are conscientious, health conscious. I drink a lot of G2s and Gatorades and, and waters, and that's about it, man. And then I have a, I guess, a process question. Uh, is there a certain quarantine period here, or is it a like once you test negative, you can return, or is there a you're out 10 days minimum and then you test? Do you, has, have they given you what, what you know, the return plan is? Robert, I'm going to correct you on one item, right? I'm not under quarantine. I'm in under isolation, right? I asked that same question. I, I, I referred to myself being quarantined the other day and I was scolded. Um, uh, so quarantine means that you're put in an, an environment where you're um, basically in, in a remote location by yourself, not remote, but just a location by yourself, but you're uh, limited on you can come and go. Isolation means you get put in a place and you're supposed to stay there. So I literally haven't moved other than the transition from where I was at to where I am now and, and, and vice versa. I, I, I said, well, can I go get in my car and open the sunroof and drive around and not talk to anybody at 11 o'clock at night? And the answer was no. So I'm, I'm literally uh, under isolation. I haven't been given the exact date. I've been so concerned about everything else. Uh, you know, I, I, I do believe that it'll be sometime before the Northwestern game. Um, and, you know, I tested negative on Saturday and then Monday was a positive. So I don't know where in between is going to go, but I'll just do what they tell me to do and hopefully I'll be back for Northwestern. Okay. Then one just final question. Yeah. Can you like order DoorDash or have any food <laughs> delivered? I, I actually don't because I kind of want to stay. Uh, I don't want people to know where I'm at. There's very few people. Um, uh, I will tell you, I'm in the CU area uh, and, and uh, um, uh, uh, nice little uh, uh, Airbnb. I guess it's not real big. It's probably uh, about as big as a, a nice hotel room, but um, I, I really don't want, uh, you know, any unwanted traffic or people around me or, or and I don't want to put anybody at risk either. So uh, yeah, people have been great about just, I get a knock on the door, they leave me a little food and it's very weird, man. It's just extremely weird, but it is what it is. All right. Thanks. Definitely. Man. All right. Thanks coach. Thanks coach. Thanks, Rob. Thanks coach. Lucky Rob, you man. don't have to do it in a fraternity house. <laughs> Be safe.